you never quite know what's going to happen next round here. The phone rings, um, and here we are with the Mark One Cooper S. We've always got a soft spot for these. We all love them. Before we get into too much detail on this, I think we need to go for a little ride. It sounds like a mini. These are cool just listening to them, aren't they? All the luxuries, like manual chokes and everything. It even smells like an old car. You just know when you're in old cars, they just smell different. Don't no power steering with them, you need it in a mini. Honestly, nice it's great to be back in a mini. We've all had them, we've all had them over the years. We all had them in our youth. And now they're becoming like a lot of other classic cars. Very flexible, especially the Mark 1, especially these. Just letting it warm up a bit. So the Cooper X, obviously very successful in racing. They did the, the early Coopers, the 99, was it 998 and 997 in different strokes. Then they went on to the, the 970, which was a, a little special to just to get into the under 1000cc class. And they did the 1071 and this was the ultimate, the 1275. So in 67, it was the last of the 1275 Mark 1s. So as you can see, we're all a bit of a, a mini anorak here. We do like minis. Just noticing the choke and everything, like you do all the things that you forget how to do. Modern cars, you just get in and twist and go. It's got that mini sound and, and sort of noise to it. Very distinct mini noise. Now this one's on dry suspension. And like we said, this hasn't been driven since about 1990. Uh, we've just literally got it running for the video. Um, and it does feel like the suspension's a bit hard. It's on a rubber cone suspension that hasn't moved for a while. So this car is going to need some commissioning. It is going to need a bit of, a bit of loving going forwards. I think, as you see, as we go through this video, this has got the most phenomenal history. Um, I always say you build a car around the history. We can paint cars, we can tidy up mechanical things, but you can't reproduce history. And this has got an incredible history. So we're just sort of warming up now, a bit, a bit bouncy and a bit misfiring. <laughs> it's, it's, it's cool place, it's, this is back in the 60s. It's not fast by today's standards, but it's as quick as it's, you go as quick as you expect it to. Keep bumping again. Silly jerky. Here we go. That feels great. I mean, we're pulling. Pulling better than you wanted to. A bit of this fiery, but again, so this hasn't, hasn't been driven for a long time. It's quite a little car. Feels alive. The indicators and he loved the little little flashing green light on the end of the indicator stalk. The other thing is, I'm just turning around on the back, you feel very small in this. You forget how big normal big cars are now. Here we go. Pulling again. Making those lovely mini noises. This is a cool car. You, you couldn't not go out in this car and come back smiling. Full of nostalgia as well from 1964. I mean, that's as old as me. Probably in better shape. And cars that are evolving as well, you have to do things that you're constantly keeping the thing running, dipping the clutch. Still a bit jerky. I think modern cars with the just get in and go, not that they're all boring, but you lose a bit of the fun. And I'm not saying you necessarily want to go to Cornwall in this thing, but for a whiz around the block, going to go to the pub. What a fantastic little car. And again, on the collector level now, especially the Mark 1s seem to be worth an awful lot of money and climbing. Every auction that they come up in, they've gone up again. What we thought was a lot of years ago is the normal now. Pressure, gearbox is good. I must 
me, it's just great to be out of a little wingy again. Forget how much fun these things are. I've got David here with it, who is the original owner of the car. He bought the car off his father in 1969. 69. 69. The car hasn't been driven since 1990. We've been up into London with the trailer to pull it out of David's house, and we've got it here today. Um, you know what I'm like on numbers with the Ferraris and everything, so the history of this car, David said, oh, I've got all the books and everything, and I thought this is getting really quite special now. So we've invited John Parnell down today, mm. who is the authority of all things Mini Cooper. Well, I, I'm an enthusiast. <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm an authority, an enthusiast. And yes. has written books on the subject. Well, book so book. while we're all here, we thought, no, we'd record this and, and share it with you. So mm. looking at the history of this, David, just going through bits and pieces, um, I, I was fascinated by this. When this came in, you've got the, not only have we got the original service book for the car but we've got a little handbook here that you've you've been writing in since since i got it at thirty thousand miles in 1960 something you put seven shillings worth of fuel in and, yeah. you, and it's recorded all the fuel that went in the car and all the all the trips you did right the way through your entire ownership and the book is completely full up with all this stuff when things were done, and then when the book got full, you started writing on the back cover, <laughs> on the back cover of everything. Well, I think we ended up on the front cover as well. Background. I mean, this is a, this is astonishing. I mean, I'm sure. No, you've been excited to see this today, mm. John. I have. Yeah. And I think where was the piece here? You were saying that all the bits you did because the the car. The car was driven as a, as a daily car in London for your father as a doctor, because it's still got the Doctor on Call sticker on the back. My father lived in, in, um, in Dorman's Land in Surrey. Right. Uh, and he mainly used it there. Um, and he had it for four years and serviced it. And then I persuaded him he didn't need it anymore. <laughs> right. And at the time, I was just getting into motorsport um, by doing sprints in my standard 850 Mini, and I thought the Cooper S would be just right. And I persuaded him to sell it to me. Um, I paid him good money for it. And what, could I ask, what was good money back in the 60s? Well, it cost 850 pounds-ish Ish. new. Um, and I, I'm not sure how much I paid him for it, but about 600 pounds, probably. So he was happy, he got his money back almost. Yes. <laughs> in a car that he'd driven for and, a few uh, years. And then I... I looked after it, so was it, but immediately it became my competition car. Right. And did sprints and hill climbs, um, and a little bit of circuit use. Uh, and then I won the 19... Is it... Is it I've noted it down here, isn't it? 71? Yeah, the, the, say it's got... ACSMC, that's the Association of Central Southern Motor Clubs uh, Sprint Championship in 1970. And I won the championship in that year. So this car's had a life. It's not only been a road car. I mean, we all know the Cooper S's were the sporty one. You know, thanks to people like Paddy Hopkirk and things like that yes. that made them famous. But here you are as a, as a sort of clubman, you know, semi-professional driver, using the car. Yeah. It's so fantastic. Then, then, I, I think what's remarkable that is, in spite of its competition life that it's had, it's remarkably original. It's still got the original interior in it. Yeah. It doesn't have a roll bar in it. Uh, the engine bay looks fairly standard. Very standard, in fact. Uh, it, uh, normally, when cars go through competition, they undergo all kinds of changes and, uh, that people do. They even paint the interiors black right. and that sort of thing, take the carpets out. This car, it's all still there. All of it, and that's what I find quite remarkable in the view of the way you've used it down the down those years. Well, in those days, you didn't have to have fireproof overalls. No, you didn't have to have a roll cage. Um, so, a standard car was was perfect, and um, that's what we used: drive to the meeting, yep. pump the tyres up, compete, and then drive home in it. Mm. Uh, which was what classic, which was club mate racing was all about. Was, yeah, but I yeah. think from all of us, especially from 
from a technical point of view with you and I, John, that to have a car that's that original, because like you say, a lot of the race cars were modified yeah, quite heavily. Very heavily. Whereas this is pretty much still a road car. It is. With, yeah. That's being used. Um, I mean, even when David has had things repaired, he's had to replace the dynamo. He replaced it with the correct dynamo with a larger pulley on it, for example. Right. Uh, he's kept all of the detail there, though the carburettors have probably seen quite a bit of attention in time. They've still got the original tags on them. Yes. The, motor, the wiper motor's original, the, the, uh, the distributor's original. It's still got the original front panel, so it's not been crashed. Yeah. Um, it's so got the original body number, the original chassis plate, the original FE number. It's all there. And then when you lift the carpets up inside, the footwells are all still the original. And in your experience, that's quite rare. I mean, it, bear in mind this It's lovely to see that it's, it's all... You know, the, the fact that the car hasn't been involved in an accident obviously helps. It's, it's had one or two panels replaced, uh, as, as they would do. It's, mm. a, it's a 57-year-old car. Yeah, but I, is... I was... Uh, it, it's still got the original bulb headlamps. Which yeah, you, you, you picked up on that almost as soon as you walked in this morning. Yeah, um, yeah, he didn't put an extra fuel tank. It's still a, a single fuel tank car, which is correct for, that, for the car of that age. Because we all, people have seen the car, and I mean, we all, we all know the Mini Coopers, and everyone yes. says that, no, Coopers, Cooper S's had twin tanks, but actually, as it says in your book, no, the early Coopers didn't have, the later ones did have, yeah. some, some have got upgraded. There's a lot of differences. Now, obviously, David has done a few things to it. He, he, he put an oil cooler in it, which was a sensible thing when you're doing competition. Yes. Uh, it wouldn't originally have had one. There was an option for an oil cooler back in 1965, uh, and it would have been a vertical oil cooler, but he's put a horizontal oil cooler in the front. And there's been one or two other minor changes. The, the, the coil's been changed, and it looks like the, uh, the starter solenoid's been changed, but that looks like it's been on there decades yeah. anyway. Uh, but apart from that, I mean, the radiator's still the original radiator. Even though it's been recalled, you kept the original header tank, etc. on it. So, and that's another thing you yeah. picked up on this morning, the little dimples on the top, and I didn't, I yeah. mean, yeah. the, the I little mean, the things. Fan, the fan has been changed from 16 blade to just a two blade, but they're all minor issues, very minor issues. And that was something you picked up on, David, that the, the fan was a bit noisy, so you changed it. Yeah. Well, the, the, the idea at the time was that uh, he wasted a lot of energy driving right. a 16 blade fan with a two blade fan would work so you got an extra horsepower yeah. or two and, and of course I think in 1970 or 71 you converted it to dry suspension because the, the hydroelastic wasn't working very well for you in well the hydroelastic pipes yeah. busted yeah. and the logical thing was to convert it to dry I had subframes coming out of my ears and so I put some dry yes. suspension on it and it handled much better. Yeah. So it has undergone some modifications, uh, but nothing too unusual and nothing mm. that can't be changed back if somebody wanted to change it. The, the original green logbook, I mean, I've been very delicate here. So the, to find the original logbook with David's name on it and have David here sitting with the car, <laughs> no, he's gone through all this history with us today. You know, deciphering his, his handwriting of you know, when you did this and when you did that. I mean, this is quite extraordinary. Sometimes you get these sort of things, but you can't actually sit with the guy who wrote it all no. and has owned the car for And of course you've got the, the service book with his father's name in yeah. as well. Um, the original handbook and the most extraordinary notes of not just the events and filling in fuel, but also the various repairs that were done to it as a, it was a rebuild. Uh, anything major that was done to the car mechanically is all itemised, so it's as good as any service record, and it's dated every single thing. Um, I mean, obviously, doing competition and sort of things, Dave. When when you did all this, this was just like your hobby, I suppose. Just recording. I mean, there's endless bits in this, as you say, that you just kept a record of everything you did with the car. I've always done that with all my all my cars, um, and I still do. Um, I, I'm currently still racing and I have a book and every time I go out and do a test day I make notes Right. and every time there's a race I make notes So because it's easy to forget and so you come to the next event and you think, ah, oh, we did such and such So, and here it is mode. going right back from the 60s of when this yeah. car had head gasket changes when it had, in, like you say you went, there was a trip to Scotland that you ran a, one of the big end bearings so you yeah. drove the car to Scotland ran one of the big end bearings 
and documented here is when that happened and when it got fixed. Yeah. Mm. This is just extraordinary. But like you say, the, the actual block and the gearbox is still the original block. Yep. And the engine number, the original the engine number is still, still there. there. It hasn't been dead. I put the laminated screen in in 1969. It's the same screen. And it's yeah. still there today. Yeah. I think it's been reboard. and it's now plus 40. Yeah. It's plus 40. It's yeah. a plus 40. Yeah. I did, I did, I rebuilt the engine, plus 40. Yeah. Um, Which again, for a little car, these cars, I mean, had engine exchange units put in them and all sorts. So yeah. to have the original engine yeah. still in the car. And, it's, and it's, it's 1298. Yeah. After all yeah. that use. And it's... Uh, it's still got the original gearbox. Yeah, as well, the original gearbox, which I've rebuilt. So we've looked at the history of the car. Um, what I thought we'd do is just do a walk around with John. Obviously, John's got fantastic knowledge of these cars. I'm enthusiastic on these cars, but from a man who writes the book on it. So we're just walking through what the, some of the original features of this car that make it so special. So just starting at the front, John, what sort of things stand out to you on this car? I like the fact, to begin with, that it's got the original number plate on it, a Blue Mel's number plate. Yeah. It's a nice feature to have. It's clear the grill is the original in here. It's still got its original bulb headlamps, which it would have had for a car of this age, 1965. The headlamp bezels are all to the originals as well. So most of these would have had like sealed beam. Sealed beam came beam in, in 1966. This is a 65 car. I would expect it to have bulb headlamps, and that's what it's got. Um, what I particularly like about the whole engine bay is You've got the original body number here. The original chassis plate is tucked there. T tucked away under tucked there. Away under there. You've got the original engine number still on it. There is an FE number there as well, which I'm sure will tie, all tie back to the, the car itself, the age of the car. And I know on some of these, some, a lot of items are date stamped, and I know particularly things like wiper yes, motors. Yes, the wiper motor is the original. That's so dated 465. April 65. Um, you've got the distributor down here, which I notice it's the original oh. 40819 distributor, it's dated 365, so that's clearly original to the car as well. These yes. little tiny aluminium tags on top of the dash pots, yeah. or the, the float chambers. I can't read the, the detail on them very well, but I could see from the... the can just about make it... Um, the, that they're still there. Yeah, AUD 146. And, and again, like these dimples in the radiator. Yes, it's, <laughs> this is the correct radiator for the car of this age. It's lovely to see that's still original. This breather is is clearly still original as well the early type they didn't they changed to a flatter type in 19 january 66 the dynamo has been replaced but it's good to see it's been replaced with one with the correct pulley wheel on it uh, the horn is the original i wouldn't have expected to see that starter solenoid but i can see it's been on there for <laughs> decades for, decade. for a long long time and David, you don't remember it ever being changed anyway. I don't remember it no. being different, so no. that is original. And, and that's one of the other unique things about this car, that when we've got a question, we can speak to David, who's owned the thing for yeah. 40, 50 years. This, this car would originally have not been fitted with an oil cooler as standard, because David has used it for competition. He's fitted a horizontally, the latest style yeah. oil cooler in it with the oil cooler pipes. It's a dry suspension, but that was done the best part of 50 years ago. Yeah. Um, so it was wet suspension, as you would expect, but it's, it's been converted to dry. The air box is the original. It's got the original fixing. Little wing nuts um, on there. Nuts on there. Manifolds. Um, the manifold is the original. Even the washer bottle, I mean. Yeah, the washer that, bottle that, the original as That's well. been there for a good few years. The coil isn't the original, but it does the job. Again, and this is serviceable yeah. items. These yeah. And these are obviously fairly modern. They're all serviceable items. It's had a new uh, water pump, as you would expect. But the important details are there. I love the fact it's got the original front panel still on it. Yeah. With that body number on it, which is a lovely thing to have. So... We're all they're, good. They're there's, good. Um, there's lots of key a, features here. That a lot of key features. It's a car that, that's been used, and then when they get used, they get serviced, and when something breaks, you replace it. Um, Luckily, in this car, not too many things like that have happened. No, it's been brilliant. So it's remarkably original under there. The seats are, are the original. They're in remarkable condition. 
Um, there's not a lot wrong with them at all, um, think, all of them. Looking through the history, there was an angle that, David, you had some of the seats just slightly repaired. Yeah. I've had the seat of that one, of the driver's seat repaired, but it, you know, it's indistinguishable. It's, from, from and the receipt from where you had it done is in the history of the car. <laughs> yes, that's right. Which is incredible. Um, the carpets have obviously been replaced, um, but the floors are are pretty good there's a, there is some corrosion here the car's obviously had it's had seals put yeah. on it and there is some corrosion in the car you'd expect from this age but and we were talking about gauges i mean yeah the the, the, the detail of the mini people that know this that you were saying that the, yeah the diff ratio is recorded on the... it's it's an sm4417 um stroke 18 18a in there uh which is the correct speedometer for the car it's a 130 mile an hour speedometer um, it's it's got the 344 diff that's denoted on there 1280 uh, denotes uh, 344 diff the dashboard is all original yeah oh, lovely and it's still no beautiful condition the little yeah. air vents on the top here and everything yeah correct ashtray is all here this is all original there is a the re interior light's been changed We're at some sure point so we were laughing about was the clothes peg that it was an old trick on on yeah. minis that when the choke didn't quite stay out properly, you stuck a clothes peg on it. Mm. David's still got the clothes peg there yeah. that he used. <laughs> You've still got all the original liners in the doors. The doors are in pretty good shape yeah. as well. Um, they are it, underneath, yeah. It's, it's seen, yes, it's done 118,000 miles, this car. It's had, it's had an engine rebuild. It's now plus 40. But, but it's remarkably original in its detailing car, inside. I mean, it's clearly been very well looked after. It has, David. yes. For the seats to be, you know, I've seen cars that have done far less mileage, that are in far yeah. worse condition, that are half you know, the age of this car. Obviously, all the, the, the headlining, etc. is all. All the seats are been fine. And even like David said, that when he went hill climbing and that in it, he put tools and spare wheels in the back, and it's. Yeah, he still looks I, after I, that I, well. It doesn't look as though too many people have sat on <laughs> the back of that car, but no. single tanks up to January 66. And that's when they went over to a twin tank. So that makes this correct. So yeah. there are two presses out there with single tanks. In fact, there, there were more Mark I Mini Cooper S's built without the extra tank than there were with it, because up until January 66, uh, the additional fuel tank was only an optional extra. Right. Then from January 66, it became standard, standard equipment, which is what along, along with the old cooler. That was the other thing yeah. that became standard on it. And David never chose yeah. to have the twin tanks done. So but you've got the nice original Blue Mel's number plate here. So that's the original plate from... Yep. Yep. I don't know when Blue Mel's stopped doing those little aluminium tags. And again, that's the pop-up number plates when you open the boot on the minis. Yeah. It drops down. Yep. The boot board, the, the, the liner here has clearly seen a lot of use, but what I think is nice is that this lock has still got a date on it and it says week 23 of 1965. So that's clearly the original lock. So we're seeing lots of things on this car where the dates are all tying mm. up, as you would expect of a car of this pedigree yeah, it's under, the, under that ownership. It's not been got at. I, out, I, I, I would say these rear lights are original as well. Yeah. They've got a little dot on the lamp as well, which suggests. I mean, obviously the boot, the boot has seen a lot of use. It's had tools and God knows what else put in it over the years. So it does look a little bit rough and ready, but it's all, it's all the original. Yeah, there's no doubt about there's it. There's no doubt about and that. As you say, David's here to, to vouch for it all. That and it's, it's life. carries some battle scars inside the boot there with the scratching and all kinds of things that you would expect of a car that's seen that sort of use and been used for competition and has had God knows what put in the boot. Yeah. Four and a half inch rims. But they're, wider rims on it as it's got the wide well yeah. four and a half inch rims were an option right it was okay. three and a half was standard but four and a half but it's all there it's the original doors it looks to me from the glass it's all the original glass it's still got all the original glass etchings yeah the owner is here who's, who's actually took, bought it from his father back in the late 1960s and he has his file with loads of paperwork to go with, yeah. including the original logbook, service book, loads of service information that, that David has himself written, mm. which is remarkable to read. So every, all the repairs, everything is documented when the repairs were done. It's a plus 40 on the block, yeah. but we've been out in it today and it runs, it drives, it goes, it stops. Um, it would benefit from, I think, a service would help. Yes. But, but the nice thing is that engine starts and the engine still sounds mm. sweet. It's got the original gearbox in it, which I believe has been rebuilt, yeah. but quite some time ago. 
So it's got a lot going for it, a lot of provenance, um, and it's, a, it's pleasing to see a car that's got that history to it and still got the still owner. Still got the owner here today.